Hey guys, what's up? Alright, so uh, in this video series, what we're going to be looking at is how to set up Django and uh, React as quickly as we possibly can. I'm going to be building a music website and I'm not going to get too complicated. I basically want to build one app, which is going to be for the uh, rock bands. And then I want to be able to populate that with some data, turn it into a RESTful API so that I can communicate uh, using React to grab JSON data back and forth from the Django server and have all the view and stuff like this um, uh, essentially rendered with React and probably Bootstrap. And um, in the process, what we want to do is we want, we want to install some tools like Bower and um, Gulp, which is going to help us maintain a lot of the project dependencies and packages. So this is really about getting the project up and going the right way. Um, now my Django installation here is actually on a server, so it's uh, it's on a Linux environment using a Ubuntu 14.04. I'm also using a virtual environment, so you can see here um, uh, I'm using Windows, so I have to communicate with my Linux server via PuTTY. But I'm assuming if you're on Linux and you're following along, you can just um, follow along on the command line. Otherwise, um, you'll have to use the command line on, on Windows to run your, your Django application. But you want to make sure that your Django application is set up inside of a virtual environment. That way, any sort of modules and things you install will just be limited to this one particular uh, environment so that if you have multiple websites on the same server, you don't have them sharing packages, especially when those packages become incompatible with, with one another. So in this case, I do have the virtual environment activated, and we're going to need some basic stuff. We have a, a Django website, and I've already gone through the headache of, of having my uh, virtual host and all that stuff, which is a nightmare on its own, um, just set up so that the Django application is actually running. You can see it's throwing an error. So we're starting from scratch. Basically, there's no template, uh, and we're going to build everything from scratch. So let's go ahead and look at what a Django project structure should look like for uh, you noobs out there that are, are just getting started. Um, you can see on my music, um, I have uh, uh, basically a local copy of the, the web application that I use for, uh, that, that I would keep on my own computer for development. And then when things are ready and working, I then uh, transfer those to the server. Or if I'm going to be lazy, I just um, upload them right to the server and debug, right, you know, doing that. And that's typically what I do just because I don't have um, you know, some sort of production site out there that has a ton of traffic that I have to worry about if it goes down for an hour or so. In this particular case, I've owned this domain for several years and like nobody goes to it. It hasn't had a website there in several years. And I want to change that. Uh, but anyway, what we have here is we have the music environment. That's what I created. That's a virtual environment created for me when I installed that. And then you have mu uh, this music app, which is um, it's a single app. Um, anytime you set up your project with Django, you're going to have your initial app set up. And that's what this is here, where you have the settings, the URL, the views, and your WSGI, um, your WSGI file is necessary so that Apache knows how to um, to run your application. It calls on the WSGI, which then calls on Django and builds your application. Um, now what I like to do is I like to have a static folder set up in the root directory. So in the root directory here, music is the root directory. And then in the Linux environment, uh, I would have the same thing, um, very similar here. So uh, I have my name, and then I keep all my projects in web apps here. Uh, so it's a little bit different. You can see on my Windows environments, projects, and then music. Here it's web apps, and then it's music. So I'm sorry. So I'll CD in the music here. And you can see that the same exact thing that you're looking at over here is, is the same. So you see logs, music, music environment. All that crap is down here. So um, static, the reason why I want to have a different static file is because I have um, Nginx, um, which is, there's two servers that I use to render my websites. Like here is um, a, a movie's website that's using React and Django. And all this static content, like from React to the images, all that stuff is being handled by Nginx because it can handle it better than Apache. And then everything else that Django needs to be able to run the application, like querying the database, all that stuff, all those requests are handled by um, Apache. So to have those set up, it, it's easier, I find, to have my, um, my Nginx, instead of saying, hey, handle this file, uh, or handle CSS files, JavaScript files, image files, I tell it instead to handle everything out of the static directory because everything in the static directory is my static content that I do want it to handle. So uh, that's why I separate it out like that. 
and um, you can see the admin has its own CSS stuff. That's the Django built-in admin uh, that will uh, end up uh, that you end up using uh, anytime you you run Django. So we have uh, CSS, JavaScript files, and then I also have my templates in my static. Here. I want to delete that. That's not supposed to be there. Um, so let's see, CSS, JavaScript, and then one other thing inside the images, uh, or I'm sorry, static folder should be the uh, images folder. So we'll create that now. And then outside of uh, the static in the root directory, I like to keep my templates file separate. So if we want to look at the settings file, which is the main um, Django file that you, you use, basically your cockpit, it's your dashboard, it controls all the internal settings of your application. If you're used to ASP.NET, it's similar to a web config. And um, in here, we have our template directory identified, and like I said, that was in the root uh, directory under the templates folder. Um, you have allowed hosts. You need to have this if you're going to be running in, uh, on a server so that you can actually access the file. Uh, I'm going to have it set to debug true for right now. Um, so if we move down here, uh, a couple of important things. You have the static root, which is going to be pointing to the actual static folder I was telling you about before. And then also have a media root. Media roots made for uploads, like when people upload their avatar images, things like that. And those should be handled in a separate folder uh, than, than your static. So I, I just keep them in an uploads folder. So uh, I won't be doing anything with that for quite a while, but that's just initially what I have set up here. Um, and then down below is where you're going to Im implement your database. And it also has your Django secret key, but for security purposes, I can't show you guys that because then you can see my password and all that for my database, and that's not cool. Um, so that is basically the uh, the internal uh, Django setup. And um, what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to go ahead and create our first module, and we're going to start designing uh, our project for that. So uh, go ahead and stay tuned, and uh, thank you for following along. Please subscribe. Bye.